Hi everyone, it's Helen here from Bodywork Pilates and we're here again today for another of our How to Get the Best From series. And today we're going to have a look at stabilisation and articulation using the midi ball. So this squashy medium sized ball we call the midi ball is by me no means the only piece of equipment we have at the studio but it is a very popular piece of equipment and if you've been to the studio you will have used it quite often and even in our other classes at Gresford and Chester you will have seen these. Really good simple piece of equipment to use but adds a lot of fun and challenge into a class. So placement is really important, you really don't want to put your weight onto this into the lumbar spine. So when you're lying, it really needs to go towards the sacrum if you're working around the lower body, behind the breastbone if you're working towards the upper body. There's some variation on that, but they're the two main points. So we're going to lay down first, we're gonna look at the ball placed at the sacrum. So the sacrum, just grab the spine. The sacrum is, so this is the back of the spine, back of the pelvis, is that traveline shaped bone that disappears just between the buttocks. So you've got the back of the pelvis here and then the sacrum at the base of the spine that then continues into the tailbone. So we want to put the ball at the sacrum. When we lay our weight onto the ball, the ball should then become more of a, a disc. If we were to place our weight on and try to imprint our back, the ball would become a wedge with the air moving towards the feet if we were to overarch our back, the ball would become a wedge with the air moving towards the shoulders. So as we place the weight on at the sacrum, we want to feel that we're going down fairly evenly, becomes more of a disc. So lay down carefully, lift the pelvis, and then just place the ball in. So again, well away from the natural arch of the low back, just feel that the weight's resting straight down. We're still going to call it neutral, although clearly it's not the same neutral as when we're lying flat to the floor. The feet and the knees are still hip distance apart, the shoulders are still wide, the back of the neck is still long, and the ribs and the breastbone are still nice and heavy. So at this point, you can see how easy it is just to mooch around on the ball, which actually in itself is really nice. It's like a self-massage. And if we were to imprint the spine, as if moving into shoulder bridge, because you're that little bit high, you get much more movement. So the air now has been pushed towards my feet and I've squeezed the air at the back of my spine. And then if I bring it back to center, if I was then to try and over arch, I would have to push forward and the air would move slightly backwards. So this is really nice for getting some movement into the spine. So just being on the ball and going from disc to wedge as you imprint your spine and then return to disc. Just opens up that spine, just puts a little bit of movement into that lower back area. Gently massages the tightness that sometimes sits around the back of the pelvis. And if you do this, you'll notice that little bit of movement from side to side when really you think you're very still, but the ball always highlights these things. So you can feel that little bit of imbalance you actually don't need to put very much weight into your feet at all. So this is a great way of getting movement into the spine as you would in shoulder bridge before you have to apply any pressure through the feet. So we get that feeling of just drawing the pelvis towards the ribs, of shortening those distances between the hips and the ribs, those bony landmarks, and then returning them back to the natural position. So that in itself is a really nice little uh, movement for the spine. Taking care to maintain the weight directly onto the ball, we keep our slight corset, so think about the way you would maintain that, that security around the centre of the body. Keep the ribs soft, and just move into a backstroke movement, so allowing one leg to extend forward and the opposite arm to extend back. Bring it back to centre, replace really softly, and then change. And the challenge, of course, is to Keep the pelvis as still as possible without having to use the arm or the remaining leg excessively. So think about what would happen if you were to place a spirit level from hip bone to hip bone. Would your bubble stay in the center? And 
And if you really want to challenge yourself, see how it feels when you extend both arms back as one leg extends forward, keeping that slight corset, wrapping around the center of the body, softening those ribs. So this time as we extend arm and legs away, we don't want to feel any change in the distance between our ribs and our hips. So as we take the arms back, the ribs don't lift. As we take the leg forward, the leg doesn't pull the pelvis out of position. So keeping everything very level, very still, just taking the arm or the arms back as the leg extends forward. Pelvis staying absolutely still. And then bringing it all the way back to center. As always, then just bringing one knee into the chest and then the other. So always loading the back one leg at a time, always unloading the back one leg at a time. And just feeling how that height of the ball behind the back of the pelvis just props your pelvis up a little higher, gives you a little bit more stretch around that low back. And then you can just have a little bit of a stretch there. And then when you're ready, one leg back down, then the other, lift the pelvis, take the ball away. It's always worth just spending a moment or two once you've taken the ball away, just to appreciate the sensation of feeling very connected to the ground at the back of the pelvis. It's almost like somebody's come behind you and scooped out a couple of handfuls of sand and uh, you feel much more uh, flattened, much more connected, much more evenly placed to the floor through the back of the pelvis. It's always worth having a moment or two there. So if you've got one of these little balls at home, then you could try those, see how you get on with that. If you are next in class and you want to just do that, just to feeling a little bit backish, then you can always grab a ball just before the class starts and of course you will often see them in classes anyway. So see how you get on and let me know. Take care.